What's going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to build a very simple beginner project in the field of data visualization and this is going to be a simple calorie counter in python so we can get right into it the basic idea is that we're going to set a couple of goals like a calorie goal a protein goal a carbs goal a fat goal for the day and then we're going to be able to add food that we eat in a certain day and we're going to see then using data visualization how much we have to eat in order to reach our goal let's say we want to gain mass so we have to eat a minimum of calories a minimum of proteins and so on or you want to lose weight then you should not um, go above a maximum for example um, and for this, we're going to use two libraries of the data science stack. So two commonly used libraries in data science, and those are NumPy and Matplotlib. If you don't have them installed already, you're going to have to install them via the command line. So you have to open up CMD on Windows or the terminal on Linux and Mac, and you have to type pip install NumPy and also pip install Matplotlib like that. Those are the two libraries that we're going to need. And to import them, we're going to say import numpy snp. This is just an alias. And import matplotlib.pyplotsplt. This is going to be for the actual visualization part. And most of the stuff here is going to be just basic Python. So we're going to have a simple data class. This is going to be the food. Now, data class, because we don't need any functionality, we just need to have the individual fields. Uh, for that, we need to import data classes. So we're going to say from data class. Uh, data classes import data class. Let me just turn off the auto completion. Um, and then we're going to create a class called food. And this food is going to have the field uh, name. This is just going to be an identifier here uh, or just a label. And we're going to have calories, which is going to be an integer. We're going to have protein, going to be an integer. Uh, we're going to have fat. It's going to be an integer and we're going to have carbs. Now, of course, you can also make those floats if you want to. Carbs, there you go. Um, and then we're going to set some goals here. Like those are going to be, we could make them constant. So let's write them in, in uh, uppercase. We're going to say uh, calorie underscore goal, or you could also say limit is going to be, let's say 3000 for a day in uh, kilo calories like that. Um, then we're going to have protein goal, and this is going to be, uh, I don't know, 180 grams. If you're 90 kilos, this is uh, twice your, your weight. So this is in grams. Then we have, uh, let's say fat goal of 80 grams. And carbs goal of 300 grams like that. Uh, so this is the goal or those are the goals. And this is the data class that we're going to use in order to add food. And of course we need a list with what kind of food we ate today. So this is going to be an empty list in the beginning and we're going to add individual food objects to that list. And then we're going to compare them with the goals. Um, for that, the first thing we want to do is want to have a menu. Now, a menu, we have done this in a lot of videos already, is basically just something that runs until we say quit. So we're going to say done equals false. And then we're going to say, okay, while not done, we're going to constantly ask the same question, which is print multi-line string. Uh, we can add a new food. So add a new food or visualize uh, progress or visualize data, you could say. And then we're going to say Q is quit. Very simple. And then we're going to ask the user for a choice. We're going to say choice equals input. Um, yeah. Choose an option or something like that. And then we're going to say, okay, if the choice is equal to one, we're going to add a new food. This is actually quite simple. All we need to do here is we need to say, adding a new food and then we have a bunch of prompts so we need to say okay the name of the food is going to be input name and then the calories is going to be int of input calories and we can copy that for protein 
for uh, fat and for carbs. And here we say protein. Maybe proteins, fats, and carbs, like plural. Fats, carbs, like that. And once we have that, essentially you create a new food by saying food equals food. Uh, name, calories, proteins, fats, carbs. Uh, what's the problem here? Unexpected argument. Did I forget something? Ah, yeah, of course I forgot something. I need to add the data class uh, decorator to this class. Otherwise, this doesn't work. So we have that now. And the second option, now we can also print now successfully add it, whatever. And then now we have the option two. If the choice is equal to two, we're going to visualize the data. And we're going to visualize the data uh, with four graphs at the same time. So what we need to do first is we need to split Matplotlib into four subplots uh, in the same figure. So we're going to say figure and axes is going to be PLT subplots two, two. So two times two. Before that though, so first of all, choice. Before that, we're going to uh, calculate all the sums. So we're going to say, okay, the calorie sum that we have consumed already is essentially the sum of uh, food dot calories for food in today. So today we have, we add all the food we eat. Oh, by the way, we didn't do that. Today append food. Uh, we add all the food we eat to today and then we can sum up all the calories and we can do the same thing with uh, protein sum with uh, fats sum and with carbs sum and here we just change this to protein fats carbs or actually fat there you go um, so this is now the sum. This is what we compare with the goals. And in order to plot on the individual axes now and not in just one plot, um, we need to say axes and then zero, zero, which is top left. So the first one, think of it as a two by two square, uh, or matrix. And the first one, the upper left is zero, zero. Here, we're going to plot a pie chart and the pie chart is essentially going, uh, to show us the macronutrients. So the distribution you could say of the macronutrients. Um, we're going to add here the protein sum, the fats sum, and the carb sum. Uh, I think that's it. Yes. And the labels are going to be obviously proteins, fats, carbs, like that. And we're going to set the auto percent. So auto PCT is going to be percent 1.1 F percent percent. This is just formatting. And uh, we can also say axis zero zero set the title. Um, actually, when we're working with axes, we need to say set. Uh, so set title and this is going to be macro nutrients distribution, you could say or something like that. And uh, we're going to do that for the other axes as well. But in the end, we want to have a tight layout. So we're going to say figure tight layout. And then we want to say PLT show to see if it works. So already this should work to some degree. Uh, let's just run this and see if we can already do some basic visualization here. Uh, add a new food. Let's say this is, I don't know, test and it's going to have 200 calories and 40 grams of protein. 20 grams of fat and 100 carbs. Now visualize the progress. And we can see here that this is already uh, working. So we have now fats, proteins and carbs, how much does it make up uh, of the nutrition. Um, so this is one chart that already works. And now we're going to also add three more. Um, essentially axes. Now we want to do the top right. So zero one, essentially. And what we're going to do here is we're going to 
uh, draw a bar chart and we're going to compare the sum to the goal. So we're going to say, okay, bar. And the first one is going to be at the ticks zero, one, and two. And those are going to be our actual numbers. So this is going to be the protein sum, the fat sum, and the carb sum. And the important thing is that we set the width here because we want to have a second bar chart in the same graph. So we're going to set the width here to 0 0.4 to have enough space. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So 0, 1 dot bar, but this time we're going to set the ticks to 0 0.5 to 1.5 and to 2.5. So since we have 0 0.4 width, we have a little bit of space between the bars here. And what we're going to plot here is the actual goal. So the protein goal, the fats goal, or the fat goal, and the carbs goal. And this is also going to have a width of 0 0.4. Um, and as well, we set the title here to uh, macronutrients progress. We can call it that. Um, that should work. So let's see if this works already. We're going to run another experiment here, add a new food, test uh, 500 calories, 30 proteins, 20 fats, 90 carbs, visualize. Uh, and you can see here what this looks like. Now we have this progress here. Those are the actual goals. Now we can also add a legend here. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, but those are the actual goals and the blue the blue bars are essentially what we have eaten. Um, yeah, what, what we have actually consumed. So of course, we can add labels here. Um, maybe we're going to do that later on. But for now, we're just going to leave it like that. Uh, the next one that we want to do here is a pie chart saying how much of the calorie goal we have already reached. So we're going to say axes um, one zero. So bottom left, and here we're going to plot a pie chart. And the pie chart is going to be essentially um, how much percent we have left of the calories. So we're going to plot the calorie sum and the calorie goal limit. Uh, so actually the calorie goal limit minus the calorie sum so that we have in total the calorie goal limit and we see how much of this is already in our color that we have eaten. And the labels for that are going to be uh, calories and remaining. And we're also going to say auto percent uh, 1.1 F percent percent. And then axis one zero set title calories go progress, something like that. And then last but not least, what we're going to do is, uh, what was this? This was the, uh, let me just see what I did here. Oh, also essentially just a bar chart indicating uh, the calorie goals as well. So we're going to say one, one. Uh, this is bottom right, we're going to say here that we want to plot uh, the dis So so we basically want to see, okay, how did we progress towards the calorie goal? So we're going to plot the line where the calorie goal is. And we're going to say, okay, how, how did we get there? So did we get there with one meal immediately? Or did we have a couple of meals uh, as a line chart, essentially, so we're going to say axes one one plot. Um, and we're going to plot here as the x ticks the list of the range of the length of today. So basically, the amount of elements that we have here. Um, and the data is actually going to be the cumulative sum. And this is why we need NumPy actually, because we didn't need NumPy up until now. We're going to say NP dot cumulative sum. So um, like that cum sum um, of food dot calories for food in today. And this is uh, today. And this is actually going to have the label calories eaten like that axis one one plot 
and here we're going to basically have the same thing. So range length today, but instead of the cumulative sum here, we're going to basically just say calorie go limit times length today. So this is going to be just a straight line. Um, and the label is going to be the calorie goal like that. Axes one, one, we're going to set a legend here so that we know what is what. And we're going to set a title last but not least, which is going to be calorie calories go uh, over time. I don't know, progress over time, maybe. Let's just say calories go over time. Um, so that is it. And then we're going to say, of course, elif choice equals q. And then we're going to say done equals true. And otherwise, we're just going to say print invalid choice. And this is actually it. We're done with that. Now we can run this, make some experiments here. So let's say uh, <coughs> sorry, we're going to add a new food and the new food is going to be, let's say test food. The first one, and it's going to have a thousand calories because why not? And it's going to have 50 grams of protein, uh, 30 grams of fat and 120 grams of carbs, just making up some numbers here, not realistic stuff. Um, then we're going to say, okay, we have another food and this is going to have 400 calories and uh, 20 proteins and 10 grams of fat and 50 grams of carbs. And then one more, and it's going to be the last one uh, with, I don't know, 560 calories, 10, no, yeah, 10 grams of proteins, 20 grams of fat and 120 grams of carbs. Visualize progress. Uh, okay, we messed that up, set legend. Axie subplot. Why did I say set legend? It's actually just legend. Okay, now we're going to do it again in a speed run. I'm going to call them A. Just adding some values here. I'm going to call it B. Uh, and one more C. Whatever, visualize progress. And now you can see what this looks like. So we have essentially um, here the macronutrients distribution, how much of the calories uh, come from the different macronutrients. Most of them are carbs. I think like 50% should come from carbs, um, 30 from proteins, 20 from fat, something like that. Uh, in this case, it doesn't quite uh, fit that. Then we have also the goal progress. So we have 76 cal uh, percent of the calories or 76.8% of the calories eaten already, 23.2 uh, remain. We can also have the absolute numbers here if we want to. Uh, here we have the comparison between uh, the macronutrients. So how much did we eat from what? So way too much uh, carbs here. Uh, and here we have the calorie go over time. So we can see here with each meal, we add calories and this is the goal line. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.